This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. Stay tuned for a special delicious offer. Today, I've gone over the recent and highest voted stories from my subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash darkness prevails. And these are the stories I came up with. You're about to be disturbed. These are 10 allegedly true horror stories from Reddit that will keep you up all night. Don't worry though, I'll keep you company. So grab some coffee and do some stretching because tonight's gonna be a very long and scary evening. If you have your own story, share it with us at darknessprevails.org or reddit.com slash r slash darknessprevails. Creature Beyond the Graveyard from the Reaper 308, location, Kentucky. Let me give you a piece of advice. Avoid graveyards and forests at night. Things lurk in these places that should not be trifled with. My name is John. I live in a rural town in Kentucky. This story took place two years ago when I was only 15. My family and I have gone to the same church since I was born. I met my best friend of 17 years there. His name is Joe. Joe and I have been friends since his family moved to Kentucky from Pennsylvania right before I was born. Joe and I have always been interested in the paranormal. We used to pretend to be werewolves as we ran around the yard in the summer, but little did we know that we would experience real terror one fateful night in 2016. There was a graveyard behind our church with a large stretch of forest behind it. Beyond that forest were multiple fields. We enjoyed walking through them during the day. The graveyard was surrounded by a waist-high chain-link fence. One Sunday night, while our parents were in the church chatting, Joe and I decided to go out into the woods. We had been planning to go out into these woods at night the entire week before. As we jumped the fence into the graveyard, I developed a sick feeling in the pit of my stomach. I felt so nervous, but I didn't know why. I shrugged it off and followed Joe into the woods. After we had walked about 300 yards, Joe turned to me and asked if I felt that there was something off. I told him I started to feel anxious as soon as we stepped into here. It was then, all of a sudden, that we heard a deep, loud growl coming from the woods in front of us. When we turned to look, we saw a massive gray creature standing about 25 yards in front of us. I'm five foot nine and Joe was six foot two, but this creature made both of us look insignificant, towering over both of us. As Joe and I watched the creature, Joe leaned down to my ear and whispered, how powerful are these? Referring to the pellet rifle that we had, and I was honest with him, saying that it was only powerful enough to make it mad. Joe didn't listen. He raised it and fired, while yelling very loudly trying to scare it. Luckily, as the creature hadn't seen us yet, it must have been startled, and yelped and ran off into the fields behind it. We both breathed a sigh of relief. Then Joe said that we should run. I agreed. We could hear howling and loud footsteps after that as soon as we began moving, so that creature hadn't been so much scared as it was just trying to find its attackers. When we made it back to the safety of the church, we stared out one of the windows and saw some large yellow eyes looking back at us. We choose not to go back into those woods again. Only in the daylight, I mean. But even so, we feel followed every time we're out there. Beware of the forests of Kentucky. If you find yourself in one, watch your back and never be around at night. A shadow keeps walking into my room and staring at my window. From Tranquility. Location, England. Every day since the start of March 1st, a shadow walks into my room at 2.30 every night. I know it's not my mother or father, due to the fact that it walks in and stares at my window, and then walks out. 
I always look around my poster, which is on my wall since my bed is in an underlay in my room. I never manage to catch it walking into any other rooms or downstairs, and I never hear footsteps coming from it, as if its feet are never touching the ground. I'm too scared to confront it, because I'm afraid that if I make it turn around to face me, I'll see that it has half its face missing, and that is not something I'm prepared for. It's happened every night these days. I keep my door closed now, but it continues to open my door and step inside. I just don't know what to do. Paralyzing Fear from Dapper Bluke 1. Location Unknown. I was a young child, so I don't remember much. What I can remember is that it happened on my birthday. It was my sixth birthday, and my family came by to say happy birthday to me. Cousins, aunts, uncles, and of course my mom. We had some fun for a while and even played hide and seek. After everyone got settled down, I wanted to go to my room for something. I can't remember exactly what. I walked to the hallway, and I stopped because there was something there with me. It was this shadow-like creature. The shadowy monster stretched at least eight feet tall. It looked more like a living cloak. I couldn't see its face at all, except for a smile that it wanted to show. The fear I felt was horrible. I couldn't move as I looked at it. Even when I wanted to scream or cry, I couldn't. The fear stung in my chest, like sewing needles penetrating my skin. I couldn't blink. It was like my body became 100 times heavier. The thing stared at me for a while. Then it pointed at me with a finger made of nothing but bone. After that, without a word, it just left by slowly going into the gown it wore. It faded away like it wasn't actually there. I still couldn't do anything for a few more seconds after it left, but I never forgot that feeling. My worry now is where did the shadow creature go? Does it still haunt the apartment buildings back there? Is it following me? Or is it waiting for me to do something? At least it's a relief to finally share this story, even if it sounds insane. Werewolf Across the Field From Acheron Alex Location Unknown I'm a 20-year-old guy. I'd like to think that there isn't much that scares me. I'm in university, which is on top of a hill and outside of my town. From my dorm window on the seventh floor, I can see huge wheat fields and the nearby forest. My first encounter was last year. I have a German Shepherd named Hades and a Husky Pup named Ragnar. That day I left my university quite late. It was already dark out, and usually I don't mind taking them out at night. At night I can let them run around without their leashes. They're trained and I know they are going to listen to me well. Besides, everyone knew them and wouldn't hurt them even if they were left outside. They have collars that light up since Hades is fully black and Ragnar is fully white, which makes him hard to see during the winter. That way I could see them at all times. We walked for a while, and they were playing and running around. At some point, Hades stopped. He began to growl and look into the wheat fields down the hill. I didn't think much about it. There are bats and owls and other critters around us, so it wasn't strange. But still, I put the leashes back on them, not wanting them to get worked up and running off to chase something. After half an hour of non-stop growling, I had enough of it. I decided to take Hades home, then I could come back out and let Ragnar run around a bit more. I got home and expected him to go in his cage. He likes sleeping there and I never lock him in. 
That night, though, all he did was stand on the windowsill, staring out. Since the pup was whining, wanting to go out again, I tried to drag Hades in the cage and lock him in it until I could go back. Who knew? Maybe he might try going out the window. That's when I got a look out the window myself. On the parking lot below, I saw a dark figure circling the cars. Immediately, I thought that it might be someone trying to steal one of my cars. I got a flashlight and shone it out. It wasn't a thief, though. In fact, what I looked at was not human at all. It looked up, eyes reflecting the light from the flashlight. It was black, its head looking very similar to Hades, in fact. It was standing on all fours, but when I shone the light at it, it stood straight up. By then, the roofs of the cars barely reached the midsection of the creature. It let out a growl, which I later learned that many of the tenants had heard at the time. Then Hades went wild, trying to bust out of his cage. Ragnar was whining even louder. I realized he didn't want to go out. He was trying to get as far away from the window as possible. The growl even made me flinch, and I ended up dropping the flashlight through the window. I tried to see it again, but it was too dark, though I did hear the sound of it crunching through the snow as it walked away. The next morning, I went to find my flashlight, and I found massive dog-like footprints in the snow, with a still lingering smell, a smell that was foul. I borrowed infrared binoculars from a hunter friend of mine. Ever since then, I've seen it four times in the forest, twice crossing the field, and once near the hill looking up. My roommate and I have been taking turns keeping watch at night when Hades begins to growl. I don't take the dogs out at night, and Ragnar doesn't play and run around anymore. Now he just stays pressed against my feet, scared of something. I really hope he grows out of it. Reality Glitch from Debro Sass. Location Unknown. One day, my husband and I woke up. He went to the bathroom and came back with a tissue for me in my nose because I had a nosebleed. This was the first weird thing because I'd never had a nosebleed before in my life. I clean my nose and give the tissue back to him. Then I watch him leave the room. When he was crossing the bedroom door, I clearly saw how the tissue fell from his hand, and then he looked down to pick it up. But before he bent over to do so, he looked at his hand and the tissue was still there. Looking back at the floor, the tissue was gone, as if it had never fallen, though both of us had seen it. I saw him look at me, blatantly confused. We both uncomfortably smiled and laughed it off. Then he exited the bedroom with the tissue in his hand. I stayed in bed for a few more minutes. When I felt that my nose was safe and wasn't going to leak anymore, I stood up. I went to the bathroom. As I cross the bedroom door, I see a tissue in the floor where that original one had supposedly fallen, but apparently hadn't, but apparently had because I was looking at it. I was so confused, but at the moment I realized I was already late for work, so I had to rush to do my normal routine. Later back home that day, I told my husband about this. He didn't remember any of the incident. And he told me that he didn't recall my nose bleeding at all. When I told him it was him who had gotten me the tissue in the first place because he saw my nose bleeding, he looked at me like I was crazy. I stopped the conversation, and I began to doubt myself. Maybe it was the most realistic dream I'd ever had one that I didn't remember waking up from. But I went into the bathroom just to be sure. Lo and behold, there was the red-stained tissue in the trash can. And this is one way to make something so small and insignificant so scary. Dear Thing From Godzilla 98 Location Unknown This happened a few years ago when I was hiking a mountain. 
We started as a group, but after some time as everyone began to choose their own pace, I ended up walking by myself. I was walking downhill through a thick forest area when I slipped on an unstable part of the trail, sliding on my rear to where the path goes straight. Before I could get up, and before the pain dissipated, a deer walks out of the trees on my left and stands in front of me. This was weird, because deer usually avoid people. But something was especially off about this deer, and at first I wasn't sure why. When I looked into its eyes, they appeared lifeless, and its aura was that of unease, or maybe I was just paranoid. Then it opened its mouth, showing what appeared to be multiple rows of sharp teeth, the kind of teeth that deer did not have. Then it let out an ear-shattering scream. It sounded like nothing I'd ever heard. It was so surreal. It was like something otherworldly, something ethereal. I've watched my share of horror films, and I've never once heard a scream like that. Nothing so demonic. After it stopped, it closed its jaw, then walked away to the other side of the woods. I was left panting, heart pounding. I never told this story to anyone before. I've heard stories from other mountain hikers. I've heard them make fun of people who claim to have seen weird things, so I decided to keep to myself. But I know what I saw, what I heard, and I can't forget no matter how much I try. It gives me chills to this day. Now I probably got you all worked up, scared, and hungry, because nothing works up an appetite quite like hearing some good scary stories. Well, my friends, HelloFresh has you covered. HelloFresh is my favorite meal kit service. It's simple, fun, and delicious because HelloFresh does all the shopping and planning for you. You can't go wrong because all the ingredients are not only fresh, but they're pre-measured. All their regular meals cook up hot and fresh in only 30 minutes. And there are plans for families, vegetarians, and omnivores like myself. But you can change your plan whenever you like. We actually made one of our favorite HelloFresh meals last night. Garlic parsley blistered grape tomatoes over fried pork cutlets while chatting over Discord. It came out beautifully as always. You can get in on all this yummy today and you'll even get $80 off your first month of HelloFresh. Just go to hellofresh.com slash DPP80 and enter DPP80. That's basically eight free meals just by going to hellofresh.com slash DPP80 and entering promo code DPP80. Thank you, HelloFresh, for keeping my fans well-fed. Now, back to the show. The Clothless Man from All Hail Liverly. Location unknown. I'm 20 years old, but a couple of years ago I was a nursing student. I dropped out after realizing nursing wasn't what I wanted to do, and because of something I experienced while working as an intern at the local hospital. We had to do one month of unpaid internship every semester which counted for a huge part of our final grade. For my last internship, I was placed in the part of the hospital where they take care of old folks, specifically the dementia unit, where I'd worked a few times before. I liked working with the elderly and had already worked summers there, so I knew the place pretty well. I had been there for about a week without any strange occurrences, when one evening, as we were preparing one of the patients for bed, the alarm that told us someone was out of their bed went off. Every room had a sensor under the bed, which told us when a patient got up by sensing their feet hitting the floor. I was told to check it out as my supervisor finished up, and so I did as I was told. I looked at the digital sign which told me what room the alarm was going off in, and I hurried there. The patient in that room was in the late stages of Louis body dementia, and was pretty much paralyzed from the neck down. That means that they must have fallen out of bed, and I was afraid that they had hurt themselves. 
When I entered the room, it was dark and the patient was asleep. I looked around the room to make sure the unit's dog hadn't snuck in but found nothing. Yes, our unit had an adorable spaniel, which helped keep the patients calm by sleeping in their laps. Well, I left and about 10 minutes later, the alarm went off again. Same room. This time, my supervisor came with me and again we found nothing. The alarm went off about three more times before we decided to change it. We were having tea with some of the other nurses when the alarm went off again. Both me and my supervisor looked at each other, irritated and flabbergasted. We told the other nurses about it and one of the older ones, a lady in her 50s, said that they were used to it. That room's alarm apparently goes off quite often, yet every night when it happened, they'd go in there and find nothing. Nothing but an annoyed patient as they kept peeking into their room. We couldn't deactivate the alarm and we couldn't leave it on, so the only thing we could do was get up and turn it off. As we were walking to his room, we suddenly heard loud yelling. The patient was lying in bed, eyes and mouth wide open as he moaned and screamed. My supervisor talked to him as me and another nurse examined him for anything that could be hurting him, but there was nothing to find. He eventually calmed down and one of the night nurses decided to stay with him for the rest of the night. It was bizarre. The following morning, I had the morning shift and came in very early. Since the bus either arrived one hour early or one hour late, I had a cup of tea while waiting to wake everyone up when the night nurse who had stayed with the old man before came into the nurse's station looking bewildered. She told me that during the night, the alarm would go off whenever she wasn't in the room and what she said next sent chills down my spine. I'm terrified of anything remotely paranormal, so this made me shiver. She told me that as she opened the door to the room and the light from the hall slipped in, she swore she could see a bare foot pull away from the light. I was sufficiently terrified and did everything to avoid that room for the rest of the week. That same week, we were preparing lunch and noticed one of our patients hadn't come into the dining hall like usual. This lady wasn't very far gone in her illness and usually came walking in before we even had to tell her it was lunchtime. I went to check on her and I found her room empty. I began to look around the ward and then told the nurses we might have an escapee. A nurse and I went to check with the rest of the staff to see if they'd seen her when we suddenly heard a scream. We ran back and asked what was going on Apparently, one of the nurses had been searching her room when she heard a voice coming from under the woman's bed. When she bent down to look, the woman was lying there staring with wide eyes. She was fine, and when asked why she did that, she said someone had come into her room and began rooting through her things. She couldn't describe them, but she thought it was a burglar, so she hid. The other patients were already counted for in the dining hall, and nobody had seen anyone leave, so we just thought she'd been hallucinating. Then came the day I got to experience something for myself. I was alone in the kitchen doing the dishes when I suddenly heard a racket and running behind me. The footsteps sounded wet, oddly enough, like someone had their feet in a bucket of jello. I turned around and looked down the hallway leading to the rest of the ward and saw nothing. It was well lit and not scary at all, and the only doors it had were the big ones at the end of the hall, which leads to the rest of the unit. I didn't think much of it, as it was impossible for a patient to get inside without a key, and I chalked it up to just overhearing someone from upstairs. When I was done, I barely took notice to the wet tracks until I stepped into one of them. I had stepped into some slimy substance with spots of brown and black in it, which were in the shape of someone's bare foot. I freaked out, bursting through the doors to find a nurse. Nothing supernatural was even on my mind, and I thought a patient had gotten loose and was walking around with bare feet, having stepped in something potentially dangerous after all. They began by the door and ended just before the kitchen. 
We searched the entire floor and found nothing, not a trace of the liquid which was still in the hallway. We looked it over and had a doctor look at it, who also did not have a clue what it was. All we knew was that it looked and smelled horrible. I was tasked with cleanup, which took a while, because the very bottom of the substance had begun coagulating and sticking to the floor. It was so gross. After that, small things would happen, such as doors being opened and closed, things falling from shelves and equipment going missing. It was usual for a place where so many people perished. That's what the old nurse told me. She could tell I was starting to dread going to work. That didn't help much, because I was still scared almost constantly. And then on the first day of my last week, I saw something that makes my eyes well up with tears whenever I think about it. I was waiting for an older gentleman to finish brushing his teeth, which usually took about 15 minutes, as he was determined to do it on his own even when he could barely grip the brush. I left the bathroom that was built into his room and went to get some pajamas for him. When I saw an old man standing in the corner of the room without any clothes on, he was hunched over slightly and his arms were hanging slack on his sides. I didn't recognize him at all, so I asked for his name, slowly walking towards him. He was pale and looked gaunt, his breathing ragged. The man in the bathroom asked who I was talking to, and I told him not to worry, but on the inside, I was freaking out. If this man was dangerous, I couldn't do much as a fragile five foot four girl. The bare-skinned man was looking down and was unresponsive, so I decided to close the bathroom door to protect my patient and myself, then press the emergency call button. As I was waiting for a nurse to come help me, the man suddenly hunched down, his arms still limp by his sides. I opened the bathroom door and stepped partly inside, ready to shut us in if the man started acting too weird. Then I heard his teeth clatter, and my nurse's heart kicked in. I stepped out and grabbed a blanket off the bed. I walked up to him and was about to wrap it around him when he looked at me with wide eyes. His teeth were bared as they continued to clatter, but in the most bizarre way. It was so deliberate it looked like a cartoon character. It was almost a chomping motion. I was in shock. Something about his face looked wrong and eerie. I didn't know what to do. Then he lurched forward, trying to wrap his arms around my legs. I stumbled back and barely remained on my feet, backing up slowly. One of the first things you learn when working with these people is to stay calm, and so I tried my best. But when he went on all fours, legs stretching out straight, with his bottom lifted over his head, teeth still clattering, I was startled. He ran like that across the room, I shrieked and booked it into the bathroom, slamming and locking the door behind me. I was heaving, the poor old man in there with me, looking terrified. I didn't come out until I heard the voice of another nurse. When I walked outside, the man was gone and the door to the room was closed, like nothing had happened. I told her about the man and she looked confused at first, but then saw something which made her step outside and call for help. I didn't see it at first, but on the floor next to me, leading all the way to the corner where he had been standing, were bare, wet footprints. The liquid was brown and black, just like before. Nurses and security guards searched the whole area, but found nothing, and at the end of the day, the hospital informed us that nobody had seen him, and that all patients were accounted for. He hadn't been an escapee from another floor, I finished the week with nothing happening, but I felt paranoid at all times and thought I saw shadows around every corner. I never saw anything like that again, and I have no clue if it was just a guy living in the vents or something else, something paranormal. There were no footprints that I knew of in the floor alarm or burglary situations, so I don't know. This situation scared the heck out of me and put me off from working at a hospital ever again. I thought my life was going to end in high school. From Bouncing Brick. Location, an unknown state in the US. 
I went to high school in the US, which we all know is notorious for violent kids. We have drills twice a year that are designed to protect us from that. It's required by law. But they always told us when there would be one, announcing it over the intercom at the start of the day and informing the teachers about a week ahead of time. Well, I was in gym class one day, and we were in our rock climbing unit. I was belaying while my friend was tied to the rope and climbing the wall. The whole class froze when the blue lockdown lights began flashing, and the sirens started blaring. I looked at the teacher as I let my friend drop to the ground. I thought I had just missed the announcement this morning, but the look on her face was one of horror. Thinking the worst, I undid the knot on the harness and tried to undo the knot on my friend's, but hers was too tight. She was beginning to panic and cry, since at this point, everybody had realized that this was not a drill, and we had no idea how much time we had left to get to safety. The teacher had to wrench on the knot to get it undone, while she yelled for everyone to get into the room with the pool. The bleachers were folded up against the wall, so we hid behind them, even though they didn't cover us well, if at all. I was next to one of the sets of doors, holding my friend as she cried into my shoulders. Now here's where the American school system is messed up. This happened my sophomore year of high school, before the Alice system was implemented. Which means that even though we had about four routes to escape and get out of the building, the teachers couldn't let us. We were stuck in there, just waiting for our fates. I held my friend as we sat in silence, waiting to hear the telltale boom of a disgruntled student. We sat there for nearly half an hour. Eventually, the principal came over the intercom saying that the alarm was tripped on accident and we were all told to go to lunch. But lunch was the most silent I'd ever heard it. We all thought that we were about to perish, and they expected us to eat. They wouldn't even let us go home or call our parents, they just expected us to go on with our day. And I'll tell you, in that lunchroom, I didn't see very many people eating. This was one of the most terrifying experiences of my life, and describing it even years later gives me cold sweats. Terrifying Sleepover From Anonymous Latina Location Unknown This takes place about 11 years ago. I was at a sleepover at my best friend's house when I was 13. We stayed up late, watching movies and sleeping on the living room floor cozy in our sleeping bags. Her dad was out of town on a business trip, and her mom worked night shift, so it was just me, her, and her 20-something-year-old sister. At some point in the middle of the night, I heard something that caused me to wake up. I realized that it was the front door opening, and the footsteps of someone walking in slowly, trying their hardest not to wake people up. I didn't think anything of it, besides figuring it was just their mom getting home from work a little early, like she often did. I should probably mention here how the house is set up. When you first walk into the front door, there are three hallways. The left goes to the parents' room and a bathroom. The straight one goes down to the kitchen and living room, and the one to the right leads to my friend's room, her sister's room and a bathroom. I looked around the edge of the couch down the hall because it was blocking my view. I could only really see a silhouette, because it was dark, but it looked like a person wearing a hood. Again, I still wasn't freaked out yet, because they were Muslim, so I thought it was just her mom's hijab. I started to freak out, when they pushed their hood off for a moment, and I realized it was a man in a hoodie, and not her mom. The guy left the door wide open, turned the corner, and went towards the parents' room. When I couldn't see him anymore, I woke my friend up, and panicking, I whispered, explaining what I saw. I asked if her dad would be home now from the business trip. She said no, and we got quiet when we heard the footsteps again. She checked around the corner herself and whispered back to me that he had walked out the front door and she couldn't see him anymore. We jumped up and booked it to her sister's room. We closed and locked the door behind us and woke up her sister, who was mad at first until we told her what was going on. The guy was now walking back into the parents' room, 
and after a minute or two, he went back out the front door. Her sister told us to go hide in the closet, and she called the police. While we waited for them to get there, we could hear the man walking into the house for a few moments, then just leave again. He didn't seem to be in a hurry of any kind, and we were just hoping that he didn't come to our door. Pretty soon we heard sirens, and the guy must have too because he took off. The police caught him and arrested him. Apparently, he had been grabbing anything of value, putting it in his truck and coming back for more. I found out later that he was a janitor and actually worked where my friend's mom worked at. He had heard that her husband was going to be out of town and knew that she worked night shift, so he waited until his night off while the husband was gone and she was at work to rob the place. From what I understand, though, he did not know that they had two daughters. He thought the house would be empty. This was the reason my friend's family got two big dogs after that. I still sleep over at their house sometimes, but I'm always on edge, always wondering if that door is going to creak back open when it shouldn't. Explain to me what the heck we saw. From Meg Scarlet 278. Location, unknown. This happened when my best friend and I were around 13 years old. Sophia and I have been best friends since we were babies. She's more of a sister to me, and we've gone through some major stuff together. When we lived close together, we would have sleepovers all the time. We were at my house one night. We had just turned the TV off to go to sleep. Neither one of us were speaking at the moment, and I thought I was the only one awake. My bedroom door was open and from where my bed was you could see the landing in the top of the staircase. And I just lay there with my eyes open when an apparition of a young girl walked up the staircase. Slowly she disappeared when she reached the top. Sophia must have known I was awake because as soon as the girl disappeared I heard Sophia whisper, Did you see that? I turned to look at her and she was staring out onto the landing as well. We weren't so much frightened as we were curious, and after staring at the top of the staircase for a while, I fell asleep. Several years later, when we were both in our 20s, we brought it up again, but the thing is, Sophia described the apparition as an old woman, which is odd, because I explicitly remember a little girl. Whatever it was, I don't think it was there to harm us. It's just weird that we both saw something else, despite looking at the same thing. I can't stop thinking about it. There's all kinds of weirdness going on around us at all times, and you can't escape it. It's kind of like that one fact, where at all times you're only a few feet from a spider. But in this case, instead of a spider, it's strange, mysterious creatures, old, crazy people who don't wear clothes, and spooky ghosts. So take that as you will, and try to move on with your life, because weirdness is just part of being alive. Good night. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you have a story of your own, you can share it with us at darknessprevails.org slash submit or at reddit.com slash r slash darknessprevails. If you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash darknessprevails or browse our merchandise at teespring.com slash stores slash darknessprevails. And don't forget, you can get $80 off your first month of HelloFresh by going to hellofresh.com slash dpp80 and typing dpp80. And it's a good way to support the show. Thank you. Now, as usual, here are my five favorite early comments from the previous episode about seven Nordic ghost stories. The Doomslayer asks, what's your favorite cryptid? Werewolf, always. Kojo3 official says, I think I may have summoned one of those ghosts trying to say something from Ikea's catalog. Sorry. No worries, mate. It's just there to help you build whatever you bought, because that crap ain't easy. Solitary Wendigo says, Epic. Stories for our long night of camping. Enjoy the rest of your night, DP. 
Well, maybe if you're lucky, you'll have the time of your life and get eaten by a Wendigo. Happily, of course. Julian Garcia says, not even Vikings are safe. You've got that right. What do you think made them so tough? They were always getting spooked. And Harrison Lee says, good video. I love Norse mythology. I do too. I'm surprised this is my first video on it. It's so deep. So that definitely means there's gonna be another video on it. I can't resist. Well, that brings us to the end of this Darkness Prevails episode. But don't you worry, because more scary stories are on the way soon. So stay tuned. Until next time, here are the credits to my amazing patrons who continue to donate. They're amazing people. Remember, stay safe out there and stay creepy, because this world is a strange one. <laughs>